Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldy Worm 41975 and today we are back in SnowRunner. But we're not really going to be continuing the Let's Play series as per se. Now we are going to be customising the Warthog which we went ahead and rescued in the last episode. If you haven't seen that episode it was a lot of fun. We got the Warthog on one of the new heavy trailers and pulled it back to the garage with the dam. But today we're not going to be exploring any more of the Amandra map. We are going to be making more videos on the Amandra map so stay tuned for those. But today I've got a little bit of a challenge that I want to go and do in the new Warthog. Now before we get into all that I need to just customise the thing so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so in the garage, there is, there is quite a bit of customization for this thing. And as always, I've gone in and got the most important upgrades, the upgrades that I think are going to be most beneficial. Now, I didn't bother getting any of the engine upgrades because as you can see in the bottom left there, it doesn't actually change, well, it does change the statistics, but it just makes the fuel consumption worse. So there's no point putting those in to be honest um we have got the off-road gearbox which gives us low plus low minus and high range so we're gonna pop that in there now the suspension this thing is a little bit tippy from videos that i've seen so i didn't want to put the raised suspension on this thing that is how high it makes it just in case you're curious to see that this is the stock suspension but we have a brand new type of suspension and it's this active suspension now i haven't seen any gameplay of this i don't really know how it works um but it's just like a half lift kit so i'm gonna pop that on today and we're just gonna see how we go with that now the tires we're gonna go all the way down to the mud bugging section because we are back in michigan today uh, for our challenge. I'll explain more on that in a minute once we've customized the thing um, But we have to scroll all the way down here to the mud tires I'm gonna go for these 43 inch tires. These are the same ones we could get on the Actian and also on the Tega and they are incredibly incredibly good in mud uh, now the winch um, the winch is absolutely fine, just stock, so not going to bother upgrading that. Diff lock, we have got engageable diff lock. The snorkel, um, I'm going to go for just this uh, intake filter. I think that's good enough. Uh, frame add-ons, we've got all, well, very similar frame add-ons to on the Actian. So we've got the maintainer frame, the small sideboard bed, which is... It can only hold one um, cargo like it can on the Actian. We've got a small fuel carrier. We've got the loading crane. And then we have actually got a saddle low. So you could pull a trailer with this if you want. And we've got the trunk repair supplies, which is actually a roof rack. So I'm going to put the trunk repair supplies on. And I'm going to put the small sideboard bed, I think because um, it looks a little bit funky without having anything on the back so then in visual stuff this is not going to affect the performance but we can make it look a bit more unique um, we have this uh, roof fog light which is up there just in the middle like a cyclops headlight uh, that does remove your roof rack though uh, you can go for an angled sun visor um, but I don't really think that works on this vehicle um, there's not a lot of vehicles that the sun visors work on in my opinion uh, on the front bumper We've got the stock front bumper, which just looks like this We've got the savior which adds these massive like roll bars kind of like we can get on the 750 um, Looks quite cool and then we've got the hunter Which has like the winch that are hooked on the bull bar on the front and then we've got the heavy-duty pipe I quite like the heavy duty pipe, um, add some nice fog lights on there, we've got an exposed winch, that looks really nice. Now on the exhaust, we can get stacks on this thing, so we can have the slim pipe which is on the left there, or you can get the heat shield which is on the right over there, and the stock one, the stock one just comes out of the side there, you can see that tiny little pipe just right of the step ladder. Um, I think we're going to go with the heat shield. Uh, we've got to go with some stacks on this. We can't change up the rims. 
uh, but I like how they look anyway. Now, in the paint sections, we have got a couple of um, different liveries. So we can get this, this is the one that comes with stock. It's kind of like purple, green, and lime green. Uh, kind of like a foresty camo. We can go for like an urban snow camo, I guess you'd call this. We can go for like a desert camo. You can get a different sort of forest camo. This is more like a mountain camo, I guess. Or you can go for this like inverted digital like mountain camo i really like that i think that looks absolutely awesome so we're gonna chuck that on the thing now we have got some new customization options uh, that we've not seen yet um these were just added in the new uh, i think it was update 7.0 so we've now got some interior customization nothing too fancy uh, but we have got a few options so we'll check it out you can get a bobblehead, so we can have the Joker, you can have Dash Hound, you can have a Hawaii, or you can have a Masher, I don't know what that is. Um, I'm gonna go for the Dash Hound, I think that looks quite cool. Um, then we've got some, um, I don't know what you call, well it just calls them accessories, these must be like um, smelly things that you hang off your sort of rear view mirror. So we can have the clubs, we can have diamonds, we can have hearts or spades. Um, I, I like clubs, um, so we'll go for clubs. And then we can get stickers as well. So we can have Freedom Bird, Take My Winch, Light My Fire, Holy Stepney, Your Adventure, Apologetics, Off-Road Club, Park Where I Want, and your way um hmm I, I think we'll go with park where i want because no one's gonna move this thing are they really and that is the thing fully customized it's an interesting looking little truck i i quite like the look of it um i think i like the acting a little bit more i have test driven this thing um very briefly and it seems to wander around on the road a lot We'll probably see a bit of that in the video today. Um, the Actium does drive a little bit nicer and I like the look of the Actium more. It just seems to perform a little bit better. But nevertheless, the Warthog, cool addition, loads of cool customization. So let's take it outside and have a look and I'll explain what we're going to be doing in today's video. Okay, so here we are outside. We're in the Black River um, garage at the moment in Michigan and today I want to do a speed run um, I mentioned in a previous video um, sort of a couple of episodes ago that speed running in snow run is not really my kind of thing there is some like um, time challenge things that you can go and do um, but it's not really a kind of thing that I enjoy doing in this game snow run is supposed to be like a slow paced off-roader game and that's why I like it but you guys wanted to see me do a sort of time trial thing and I thought rather than doing one that's already in the game I'm going to try and do my own time trial. So um, what I want to do is see if we can travel through all of the Michigan maps in under 30 minutes. Now before we get into this I'll show you the route I'm going to take in a second. I will just disclose I did test this off camera. Um, I just fitted the mud tires on the Actium, nothing else, no other upgrades, and I did it in 30 minutes and 50 seconds. So I think with the upgrades we have, it is possible. Um, now I'll show you the route in a second. The rules for this are quite simple. Um, we're not allowed to recover the truck if we roll. Um, if we do roll we're allowed to go and get another truck to roll us back over but the timer continues to run so that's not really going to be a viable tactic if we roll over near a garage i can go and grab a truck and hopefully roll us back over but if we're halfway across the map then that's pretty much game over because that's going to eat into your time a lot we are allowed to use the winch if we get stuck um, so the winch is not out of the question. We are absolutely allowed to use that. We're allowed to use all-wheel drive and diff lock, um, whatever is available to us. 
we're not allowed to uh, use any sort of sneaky shortcuts um, there are a couple of shortcuts I am going to take uh, but they are on a path we have to stay pretty much on a path we're not allowed to just drive up the side of a mountain we have to stick roughly to a sort of um, road on the map now I'm just going to show you the route that I have laid out for this uh, we're starting in Black River as I said um, we're down here at the garage now I'm going to have the map going in the background but I'm going to show you guys a photo of the route that I'm going to be taking so we'll be starting at the garage driving all the way across the bridge that we built in the first episode through the town out of the other side and to the Smithville Dam gateway and then once we get into the Smithfield Dam gateway, uh, we're going to go up towards the garage. We're not going to be entering the garage, just going to drive straight past it, down the hill, past the farm, over the, um, over the dam. And then we're going to go past the quarry, down into the swamp and to the Lake Island gateway. And then on Lake Island, we're going to pop out of the Smithfield Dam Gateway. We're going to take a left towards the sawmill and then follow that path right up the left-hand side of the map all the way to the Drummond Island Gateway. And then in Drummond Island, we pop out of the Lake Island uh, Gateway there. Now, uh, this is where one of my sneaky shortcuts comes in. As we pop out of the gateway, we're going to take a right immediately and then we're going to take another right which cuts off a massive section um, all the way around the side there we're going to go through the log station and then over the bridges past the fuel station over the second bridge and then through the sort of middle part of the map and then we're going to follow it all the way down across the bridge and to the port is going to be our finish line we've got to make it through the port entrance sort of where the barriers are in under 30 minutes and as i said i managed to do it in 30 minutes and 50 seconds and i only had mud tires on that was the only upgrade that i had so that is the route we're going to be taking um I didn't really have too many issues getting stuck or rolling over or anything like that um, off camera so hopefully shouldn't be too bad. Let's hop back into the Warthog and let's get this thing started. Now I'm going to have a timer going in the bottom right corner so you can see the progress that we are making and yeah let's just go with it. Right okay in three, two, one go and the timer has begun we are off now i'm gonna try and conserve as much fuel as possible uh, when i did it in my sort of test run um come on you bugger turn um i didn't have any issues with running out of fuel i managed to travel all th all four maps on one tank of fuel um so we should be okay for that we won't need to stop um, at any fuel stations which is obviously going to eat into our time as well now this thing does like to take quite a lot of damage so that will be interesting to see and as you can see already it does like to wander on the road a little bit which is um, kind of a pain if I'm honest now the other thing that I forgot to mention as well is the timer will be paused when we travel sort of through the gateway. So once we reach a gateway, we obviously have to load into the next map. And because of connection sort of things, my my um, PlayStation is it's not a pro, it's just a normal one. And I also don't have the greatest internet connection. Um, we are going to stop the timer in those because technically that's not really part of the challenge um, it's the driving that counts so that is not going to count towards it I'm not doing this speed run um, to sort of shame the warthog with how slow it is um, I just thought we recovered this thing in the last episode and uh, obviously I wanted to customize it all for you and then I thought we'll have a go at this speedrun thing and we'll do it in the Warthog because it's a pretty cool vehicle. It's a little scout vehicle so it's perfect for exploring maps and uh, yeah. 
Now I have gone in and cleared all the paths so usually there is like a rock slide right here uh, when you very first start the game there is uh, like a rock block in this path. I have gone in and cleared all of those type of obstacles on the maps so uh, like the rock slide there, I've cleared the rock slide on Smithfield Dam uh, we've repaired the bridge just after the dam. Um, we've repaired all the bridges by the log station in Island Lake. And we've repaired all the bridges across the lake in um, Drummond Island as well. So we can just go sort of the route intended. Um, because I feel if we do it... Whoa! And that was nearly a roll just there. Yeah, I felt if we try and do it without those, we're never going to be able to do it in 30 minutes. So, yeah, we're approaching our first tunnel, though, and we are up to 5 minutes and 5 seconds currently. And that is where the timer is going to be paused as we load into Smithsville Dam. It's quite intense. I mean, the first two maps of... Um, Black River and Smithsville Dam aren't too bad. I can get through those quite quickly. It's the last two maps that are going to eat into our time a bit. So, yeah, as soon as we load in, I'm going to skip the cutscene. And as soon as we start the engine here, there we go. The timer is started up once again. And we're off. Now, we're going to go right up the hill here. Again, more tarmac here. We don't really need to run in all-wheel drive here. Um, obviously, we're on the road, but it does help a little bit with the steering. So, that is why I'm running with that on. Now, as I mentioned, when I tested this myself, um, I had the same tyres on that I have on now, but they were the smaller ones, so hopefully these bigger tyres should help a little bit as well. Right, we're just coming up to the dam. Uh, we're going to go across the dam and then I have built the bridge, as I said, on the other side. Uh, don't smash into the side there. I've done that quite a few times. I have to say though, the active suspension on this, I, I'm not really sure how the active suspension works. I'll have to sort of do a bit of digging into that. Um, but it does sort of stop you wandering around on the road a little. That wasn't a great example as I smash into the thing. But in testing, I was wandering around quite a lot more than this. The active suspension is keeping us a bit more in a straight line. So if you're having issues with the so stock... Whoop, that's not where I want it to go. That's going to eat into our time. We can go for a winch. That was not good. Come on. Go, 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 go. Come on, Warthog. We don't have time for this. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so as I was saying, if you're having problems with the stock suspension, um, if your Warthog is wandering around on the road, then try putting the active suspension on and see if that helps. Um, I don't know if the race suspension, um, if that's any better. But I didn't really want this thing to be too top heavy. We already have the roof kit on there, which is going to make us more top heavy. So anything we can do to keep this thing more stable is good. Uh, sections like that hill we just came down there aren't very nice when you've got a big top heavy truck. Whoa. Nearly went down that banking. That wasn't great. We're coming up to the 10 minute mark now. And we're only just, well, we're about one and a half maps across at the moment. Now, I'm not going to stick to the path here. I did say we need to stick roughly to the path. Um, we are allowed to go slightly off the path because I do know a nicer route through this bog. Um, if you actually avoid this sort of water down here, you can can go on this harder ground up here and it is a bit nicer when I say a bit only a bit are sort of struggling a little bit with this section though um, I'd like to be going a, a, well a bit faster to be honest with you 
Now, I'm going to go to the left over here. This section is really, really horrible if you follow the actual path. If you take the route I'm taking over here, it's actually not too bad. Um, I definitely think the, the bigger tyres are helping here. Um, when I travelled this map in testing, um, I was going slower here. I was definitely not going as fast as I have done. Um, obviously, experience is part of it. But, when we have some more um, facilities available, like the low plus and like the big tyres, that is obviously going to help us. Now I'm trying to use the winch as much as possible to get us through this section. And there we go. That is sort of the that is actually the worst part of this whole speed run is that bog. That is what's going to slow us down the most. The the Drummond Island map is also quite a lengthy map. Um, you've got to go all the way around all the twisty little bits on that map. Uh, which does take quite a while. That is why I've gone for the shortcut through the log station. Which is perfectly okay because there is a path through the log section. Uh, log station, sorry. And um, we are allowed to take that. But we are now approaching our second tunnel crossing which is going to be to Island Lake. So I'm going to pause the timer once again. Okay, and start the engine and start the timer again. It would help if I release the handbrake. I have just gone ahead and set that one waypoint there because I do tend to miss that sort of turn off. Um, so just to make sure we don't actually miss that turn off. I have gone ahead and set that one. We are almost at the halfway point with the time. Um, I'm not really sure if we're, we're we're just sort of about halfway now with the with the run. Um, obviously, we're onto our third map, just at the start of our third map. So I'd say we're about on track. Um, that is not going to help. I did this on my um, practice run as well. Obviously, reversing takes time. It's more time that we're not spending going forwards. Don't fall off this bridge because that is very sticky mud underneath there. Um, that we don't want to get stuck in. We've obviously got mud tyres, but that mud in that section is really horrible. A little bit more control would be nice in this thing um, as I said the Actian seems a bit more stable like this thing seems to wander a little bit which is well it's just a bit irritating to be honest um, obviously you're not really supposed to drive this thing like this quickly it's not really designed for speed running or anything like that but if you're doing a speed run like this it would be nice to uh have a little bit more control and obviously it is a scout vehicle so you can drive it quite fast on these maps and uh, definitely let me know in the comment section if you want to see more of these speed runs I was planning to do one of these for the Alaska maps as well uh, maybe in one of the other trucks um, I'm probably gonna do all of these speed runs in um, scout vehicles just because the big trucks are more likely to get stuck on trees and stuff and they're a bit more likely to roll over etc so i'm probably not going to be doing it in any of the bigger trucks but if you want to see more of these speed runs maybe on the alaska maps or in the tamar region or anything like that let me know in the comment section or we can just continue doing the Michigan speedrun that I'm doing here and we can just try and do it in different vehicles maybe see which scout vehicles can handle this sort of the best obviously things that travel slowly like the APC are not really going to work very well on this speedrun I don't even know if that will be able to do it in under 30 minutes um, but something like the Lodestar or maybe the Chevy uh, CK they're quite fast little scout vehicles um, so they might be able to do the speed run a little bit quicker I don't know I'd be interested to see how different this and the Actian is um, because the Actian is 
Uh, a little, it does feel like quite a quick vehicle, the Actian. And it's pretty much... Whoa, that is not what I want to do. Okay. That has eaten a lot of time. It's damaged the engine. We're also eating a lot more fuel than I did on the test run. So we may have to stop. Um, we have got the fuel on the roof in case we do run out. But that takes a lot of time to refuel. Um, if we do it from the roof. If there's a garage we can just drive in. We can just press X and carry on. So we might have to stop at the garage when we pass it in the Drummond Island map. Luckily it is right on the path that we are taking. So that is nice. We are almost at the Drummond Island gateway now. I don't want to speak too soon. In fact there it is. And we are on to our last map. We're going to pause the timer again. We're at almost 20 minutes now um just under 20 minutes going so we've got 10 minutes to cross this lap last map um we've been averaging sort of about seven minutes i'd say to cross each map so far so we're on track if we don't run out of fuel so right we're loaded back in start the engine and start the timer off again now i'm just going to go in a minute to my right there you can see where that green tree is to my right um we're just going to shortcut through here now this shows up more as a road on the map and then we're going to go down here to the right and cut through the log section um obviously this is a road you know it's perfectly okay to use this uh now this map is notoriously bad for rolling trucks so if i take this map a little bit slower please don't shout at me because this thing doesn't have that much control at the best of times when you start chucking it over this map um yeah it's not it's not nice right this is the first of the bridges that i've built um if we had to go the long way around these bridges that would be bad we also don't want to fall off them because that would be game over if we fell off one of these bridges that would be game over um because there's no recovering from that by the time we've got a truck uh, the 30 minutes would be up so i'm not going to bother with that one um how are we looking for fuel we've got 38 liters remaining not as much as I'd like, so I'm just going to pull into the petrol station here and refuel as quick as we can. Luckily, this is on our route, so we'll just chuck some fuel in there. That's what I mean. If we pulled over there, it would have taken a lot, lot longer um, if we'd had to refuel from the roof rack. But because we can just basically, it's just a drive through is what that is. Okay, we've literally got a couple of corners left, that is all. We've got to go up and round this bend up here in a minute. And the port should be in view then. I have to say, the sunset and the um, the scene that we're driving through on the Drummond Island map is absolutely beautiful. I don't have time enough to admire it, but... I'm out of things to say, so... Yeah, the sunset is really beautiful. I mean, just look at that. I mean, speed running with a sunset like that does make it a lot better. Literally got a couple of corners left. And we are there. I think we are going to do this. We're not going to have very much time remaining. Um, I think we are going to do it in under 30 minutes. But it's going to be close. There we go. That is the finish line there. And across the line. <sighs> that was intense. Let's fire up my phone and see. The phone says 27 minutes 56. Um, that is not an accurate time. That was just purely for me um, to help me commentate. So you will have the exact time at the bottom of your screen. But we can confirm that it was under 30 minutes to travel across four of the Michigan maps in SnowRunner. We used the Warthog 
a fantastic little truck i have to say i really like the customization of this thing it does look absolutely fantastic um it's a shame that it does wander around on the road a little bit i might have to test it with some different tires and see if that fixes it but the race suspension i can confirm did help um because when i did the practice run of this it was wandering a lot more so if you're having issues with that try putting the race suspension on and see if that does help you um but yeah that's going to be it for this video if you want to see me rescue the warthog in the last episode i will leave a link to the snowrunner playlist in the description down below that is going to be it from me though thank you all so much for watching i hope you did enjoy if you want to see more of these speed runs don't forget to let me know in the comments as well and i will see you in the next video